This meeting, the uh, Walton County Code Enforcement Board to order. Would everyone please stand for the uh, pledge to the flag and the uh, invocation? Charles said we have to get up and work. What do you say? Oh, that's right. God and country. God and country. All Thank right. you. We're going to change. Everybody, wait. We're going to change the order. Dave, you're on. Back your heads, please. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings you continue to put in our lives, especially for the blessing of being able to live in this wonderful community in this great state and this great country that we that we are so blessed to be in. I pray that you would continue to bless these proceedings as you have and, and uh, help us to serve you and serve each other to the very best of our ability. In your holy name we pray these things. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Announcements? I have none. Anybody out there? If not, we'll proceed to the report by the code officer on case number 14-484, Edgewater Beach Owners Association. And, um, oh, minutes. I'm sorry, I skipped right by the minutes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Would you use your mic so that I, we can all hear? I thought it was sufficiently noisy. But <laughs> okay, now, can everybody hear? Yes. Okay, I, uh, I skipped over the minutes. Has everyone had an opportunity to read the minutes? Yes. And are there any corrections or additions that need to be made? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve them as written. I'll so move. I'll say. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the minutes are approved. Okay. Now we'll go on to case number 14-484. And Mr. Chairman, this is a situation, this has been before you guys now, I think three or four times, and we've received another request from uh, uh, Mr. Gates, who represents the alleged violator. And as you guys know, he's serving in the legislature and we are required by the statute to grant him a continuance while the legislature is in session. So, um, but I think hopefully next month we'll be in a different position. Isn't the legislature going to have to continue its session? Yes. Unless that happens, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad that they're working so hard in Tallahassee that they can't take a night off to come deal with this matter. Uh, I guess we have no choice but to recognize this. We don't need to vote, right? We, uh, we can vote, but it's, a, it's an automatic um, continuance. We would just need the chairman to sign the order. If, the only other matter you could discuss, and if you'd like to vote, is if you'd want to continue it to June or July. I think we voted for the continuance before. Didn't we? Well, yes, sir. Go for Mr. June. Mr. Chairman? I'm, yeah, this I, is. I think we did vote oh, to sorry. have the I continuance think we did too. until yeah. we heard from them. I'm sorry, May or June? I was wondering, don't we have a meeting scheduled perhaps in May, right? Yes, yes. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, then I'd entertain a motion to continue it till May. Till May. Yeah, yeah I don't think we have to take any action tonight. Yes, sir. We okay. just need to have the chairman sign the order. Okay, then I'll do that. Okay, then uh, we're on to the second item here. It's number six, additional business. Case number 10-73, 10 and 10-275. I guess just by way of background, I assume this is Mr. Patterson, is that right? Yeah. I, um, just to give you guys a little bit of uh, brief history, Mr. Patterson will obviously, um, he's entitled to give his presentation, so but they, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm very sorry. hard of hearing, and if you don't talk in the mic, I can't hear you. There we go. Is that better? A little bit better? <clears throat> That's better. Okay. Um, Mr. Patterson contacted the Code Enforcement Office, um, I think about a couple of months back, and requested that pursuant to Florida statute chapter 162 that this board consider reducing uh, the amount he owes on a lien that the board had previously imposed. Uh, just so you guys have as much information as possible, I tried to give you just a little bit of history on the case, but I'm sure Mr. Patterson will have more documents for you to review. And of course, we'll have his presentation. Um, and and we'll, I'll make sure you guys have a copy of this as well. It's just the Florida statute, the communication from Mr. Patterson to Karen Owens, who's our secretary. Um, and then I just enclosed um, all of the final orders from this board. And um, there was also an appeal taken of the Code Enforcement Board decision. 
against Mr. Patterson and that we have that final order in there as well. As well. So um, I guess just to make it a little bit more clear, and I'm sorry, Mr. Patterson, you can come on at the I'm, no, no, I'm his son. Okay. Uh, Howard Patterson and I'm his son. You're Mark Patterson? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Right. Yes. And it's my understanding there were three, three pieces of property and it was heard together at the Code Enforcement Board whenever you guys originally decided this item. And I think that Mr. Mark Patterson is only on one piece of property, which yes. is 917 Scenic Gulf Drive. Yes, ma'am. And that is the lien I believe he's requesting that you guys consider reducing. And you are Mark Patterson? Yes, yes sir. Okay. And sir, if you'd like to come forward, and I'm sorry. Is uh, I'm Jane Kerrigan. I'm an attorney uh, here with Mark. And we'll just hand it over to you guys, however you'd like to proceed. Would you like us to come to my Yes, room? please. Yes. Yeah. What's it? <clears throat> and first off, um, I just wanted to say thank you for allowing us to appear before you today. Um, and we're here, as noted, just on 917 and just as it relates to Mark, um, not on any of the other two liens. And basically, we're here to, to make a plea to you uh, to, to release Mark. Mark was um, not the builder of the homes. He purchased the homes from Chad, his brother, in September of 2009, and I believe the notice of violation came in February of 2010, so at the time of purchase he was unaware of um, the potential violation. And since then he has lost the home. It went into foreclosure in September of 2010 um, and ultimately was sold at a foreclosure sale in uh, October of 2013. Uh, since that, it has changed owners again, and there is now a, a new company that owns the home. But basically, um, we're here today because Mark still has the personal lien uh, on record, um, and we're hoping that the board will consider releasing that lien. Um, basically, Mark took no part in building the, building the building and now can do nothing about the actual um, violation that was found. And also, during the time that he owned the home, which was... A fairly short amount of time uh, while all this was transpiring, um, he wasn't able to find a way to fix it, uh, absent tearing down the structure. Um, and at the time, it had a $1.5 million mortgage on it, um, so it was, there was some concern with doing that as well. So basically, um, we're here today to plead plea to you all to uh, release Mark, Mark's lien. Would you go through that timeline again? Sure. Um, so he, the deed uh, is September 18th, 2009 to Mark. Um, I believe the notice of violation was February 23rd, 2010. Wait, wait, just a sec. And, and what happened in 2010? The, the, uh, well, the board issued a notice of violation for the property. Okay. And what was that violation? The violation was setbacks and um, I think a building permit. Pardon me? Uh, it was, the main violation was a setback, violation of setbacks. And a failure to get a building permit. And, and was this this incident where the three properties were connected without a building permit? Correct. The three, the three properties are connected, yeah. yes. Okay. And is it not true that, that that code violation wound up in court? Yes. And did Mr. Patterson lose that case? Yes. Yes. And did Mr., has Mr. Patterson paid... The, that those fines and liens as, as a result of that court case? No. Mr. no. Mr. Patterson does not have sufficient funds to pay $250. I'm sorry. I said Mr. Patterson does not have sufficient funds to pay $250 a day. Um, he's 37 years old. I'm, I'm, I'm right now talking about the lawsuit. I think there was a monetary consequence to that lawsuit, was there not? I don't believe so, other than the order, the amended order that was entered on... July 15th, 2013. Mr. Sullivan, it's my understanding that after the Code Enforcement Board hearing, which was held sometime in 2010, right. that uh, Mr. Patterson and his father, Howard Patterson, took an appeal of the court, Code Enforcement decision. Right. There was a little bit of confusion about the final order. It was finally entered after the appeal. Mm -hmm. um, Can you tell me what the confusion was? I think that there was an issue that perhaps it wasn't filed before the appeal was taken, so then it was filed subsequently. You're saying the county didn't file the uh, They eventually did. The, the, co uh, the code You're enforcement You're saying they, they delayed filing. Right, until the appeal was final. 
But as it's my understanding it wasn't a civil lawsuit related to this. It was just an it, appeal. It, it, my understanding is that they sued so as not to have to pay the fines that accrued because of the violation. Is that true mm -hmm. or false? They filed an appeal. So the judge... And, and they lost that appeal? Yes, sir. All right. And as a consequence of having lost that appeal, have they paid those fines? You'd have to ask the applicant, but I believe that's not the case. Wait a minute. Who did they appeal to? To the circuit court. Okay, that's what I thought. So it was... All right. So that's... Okay. When you say suit and you're saying appeal... Yeah, okay. Whatever it was. I, I, yes, sir. As I understood it, actually Mr. Patterson sued the county and lost. Is that right? He, he appealed the Code Enforcement or, Board's whatever. decision yeah. to the circuit okay. court and lost. So the bottom line that I question I have is... Have those liens been satisfied? No, sir. No. And is this property that Mr. Mark Patterson has one of the houses involved in that appeal? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So he is trying separately to reduce the amount of lien against that one property. R right. Uh, a code enforcement lien attaches to the property and to the person. Yeah. So I believe but, that's the issue. But do I understand that he bought that property after the appeal failed? No, sir. I, I don't believe that's no. the case. That's yeah. just where I was going, and I'd like to go back there. <laughs> yeah. it, Mark bought the property in September of 2009 from his brother? Correct. Chad. Jeff? Chad. Chad. <laughs> and Chad and his dad, Howard, had... They were the guys who built and joined all the houses I together? I believe Chad was the... Mark um, could speak to that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes sir. Uh, my brother was the general contractor, licensed contractor in Ford. And um, he was the one builder on the record. My brother owned the middle house, which was the 917 house. And he, he, um, he had some issues. And um, he had some issues. And he, and he filed for... And he did file for bankruptcy. I unfortunately um, made a decision to help my brother out, and he and um, with everything I could do, I helped him out. And he um, he unfortunately was just not able to, and, um, and so and so unfortunately um, I ended up losing the home also, and um, and I ended up losing you know and. You know, and uh, it's very unfortunate. <laughs> so, have people been sworn in yet? No, no. Do they? We haven't. And this is not a quasi-judicial decision. Okay. This is, okay. Great. Th this matter is within the board's discretion. Okay. Um, and so we're really just listening to. We're uh, trying to get okay. background about but this. Wait, before we get, just let me get the timeline straight, and then everybody can ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you, he bought the property from his brother in 2009. In 2010. The code board found them to be guilty as charged, and notice and a notice of violation was mm -hmm. filed. Yeah, uh, I yeah I don't know when the hearing occurred for the code enforcement. Um, but the notice of violation. The occurred. notice of violation was issued February twenty third, two thousand ten. Two thousand and ten, and then after that, what were the next items that you told us about? Um, and then, so after that would have been the appeal. So the appeal would have been entered after he, because he was actually named as the owner. So he owned it during the course of that. Um, so did he file an appeal or did his brother? I, I, no, no. It was uh, the, the three properties, the two outside properties were owned by his father, Howard. Gotcha. And Howard Patterson filed the appeal. I don't know if Mark joined in the appeal or not. I'm no. Mark is, is named as one of the appellants mm -hmm. in the appeal. I was unaware of all this while this was going on. My brother did not. My brother did not. Um, did not but realize. Mark owned the property during the course of the appeal and all that. Right. I mean, so he was properly named. We're not saying that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but basically, what what we are saying is that is he so he no he hasn't owned the property since 2013. Um. And so he's, but he still has this lien following him around, which which makes it difficult for him, um, and just has it hanging over his head that we don't have any resolution on. He can't fix it now, even if he wanted to. He can't do anything to the property because he doesn't own it. Um, and so it's as was noted, it's in the board's discretion to, you know, um, either reduce the lien or re ah. what. What is what is the amount of the lien? Is and is it still growing? 
I, well, so it is, it's written on the amended order as 250 a day per, viola per violation. Um, in the foreclosure proceedings, my understanding of how, how the foreclosure proceedings works is, is it actually wiped out that lien on the, on the home. So now I presume it's still growing against, I, I don't know. No, uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry, just to clarify. So whenever the property was, this 917 was foreclosed on Mr. Patterson, at that point the county was brought in as one of um, the parties to the foreclosure. Uh, the property was sold after the foreclosure was settled, and unfortunately the amount of money was not enough, <clears throat> was not recovered um, to cover the mortgage, to satisfy the mortgage, and the county's lien. But the so lien at that, was right, and so, so at this point, on the, property. on the property, there's no more lien on the property, it only attaches to Mr. Patterson. So did it continue after his ownership no. terminated, or is it told at the time he changed it? At the time of the mortgage uh, foreclosure, it stopped. His, okay. The fine Stop. stopped accruing. Yes. So he owes uh, $250 a day from February of 2010 until July of 2013? Actually, um, I believe it's July 31st of 2012 is what the order states. And how much money is that? <laughs> Upwards of, of $110,000 somewhere. <laughs> it's more seven, money than Mark can pay. It's 700 days or so, right? Well, it's February 23rd of 2010. Yeah, July. Okay, so how much is it? 2012 is when the fine started. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So from then until when? Uh, till October 16th, 2013. So that's 15 months. Six, 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 particularly the fall. Right. And, and the reason, the code enforcement held the hearing in 2010. The reason the fines didn't start accruing until 2012 is what we were discussing earlier. They that appealed. It, right, they appealed it, so everything was on stay until the appeal was decided. Well, when you lose an appeal, does it go back and you... In this case, it didn't up? because the circuit court issued a stay on any fines being approved okay. from that date. Karen, do you have a number? Did you say October 16th? October 16th. Who holds the mortgage on, on the thing now? Well, now it's, it's been, been sold. Bought. Or I, I believe the bank took it back after the foreclosure, mm -hmm. so the bank owns it currently. They sold it, they it, sold it again with all those liens against it? Yes. No, sir. Once they did the foreclosure, the liens are gone. I know. What about the ones before the foreclosure? Those, those are gone as well. After the foreclosure, it extinguishes all prior liens. 450 days. 450 days? Yeah. Roughly. I've got 221,300. Holy mackerel. How much? 221? Why was it 500? There were two violations. Um, oh. One was for violating a setback, and one was for development without a de permit. Yeah. Building permits. Sorry. All right. Had they gotten the building permit, then none of this would have happened because it wouldn't have been allowed. Yes, sir. I had 225 based on the number. All right. Well, are you trying to reduce the mo reduce it or eliminate it? We would we would ask for it to be eliminated, but uh, it's in the board's discretion. Um, Mark Mark doesn't have. 221,000 are really anywhere near that. Um, yes. I, I can, you, can you explain or go back, I guess, to, the, to when the violation occurred? What, I know they appealed the violation, but once the appeal was lost, why the violation wasn't corrected immediately? Or, or what? I'm, I'm kind of lost there. My understanding is there's been at least two um, engineers that have looked at it and said if you remove that, it, they won't withstand a hurricane force winds. And so I think that was the concern is taking it out. Mm. Because it's this violation, the setback, and this is, I wasn't a part of the case, this is just my understanding, um, is that they have that concrete slab that connects the three buildings. But that right. meant that they knowingly just allowed the fines but to accrue because well by the time that the amended order was entered which was july 15 2013 mark was days away from getting a foreclosure order entered against him um and he is basically living day to day i, I he can't afford 250 dollars a day 
Can you well, can you say that again for me slowly, please? I said Mark is Mark can't afford to pay two hundred and fifty dollars a day. Is this an, is part of the problem? Stopped. Or fit five hundred or whatever it is. We should have been taken into consideration yes. when they yeah. failed to get a building my, permit but, and they did stuff that shouldn't have been my done. Father, my father and my brother <clears throat> were the ones that did it. But you owned the home at the time? And, no. No. No, his brother did. My brother did. Okay. And my brother filed for bankruptcy. And, you know, my father was 74 or 75. And, you know, I did everything I could to help my brother, who is devastated. He's got problems, issues. And all my money went towards him to help him. You know, I don't have much. And, you know, I love Walton County, but I would have, you know, I. You know, I don't want to have to move, but everything, you know, this is, you know, what, well, you know, there's not much of a hard when, when you say that, I'm not clear as to what you're saying, really. I, I'm not, you well, know. Well, I didn't have, I, I didn't really have a part in this issue. Did, did he buy the house or didn't he buy the house? He bought the there house. Is a deed, there right? is a there is a deed. Doc stamps were paid. It's all recorded. And when recorded. he bought the deed, when he bought the house and got the deed, he already knew about the issue. Did you assume the lien? Yes. Yes. So I, you knew there was a lien there, and you no no the the mortgage it. lien. I'm sorry. Not the final yet yeah, yeah, been accrued. So he bought he bought the house without knowing that there was a lien on it from code enforcement. There was not a lien at the time. Right. So the lien came after he owned the house. Correct. Was the house but, but, already but the stamp, Wait, wait, one at a time. Wait, wait, one at a time here, okay? Gordon, go ahead. No, I'll just say that the, the, about stuff had already been done, but it hadn't been uh, legislated on or whatever. The, I, problem, I, the problem was before you bought it, but, they, and you knew it, but they didn't uh, convict it or whatever to, my, to laugh. My brother, my brother, um, my brother who built the home, so it was record for building the homes. Um, he went to two different engineers who said these homes would tumble if there was a um, if there was a hurricane. And and um, two engineers came and they recommended that he had to do what he had to do. And he did it. And I was not <clears throat> aware of the time. And so this was not I did not have anything to do with my brother or my father. That you know, that was a separate issue. You know, and I, my brother, who had issues, I ended up becoming involved. But the the building was you had a permit to build the building where it is now, or is there a violation on where it's set back is? It's a violation. No, I think. It, can, I, can I ask a question? Go ahead. <clears throat> If the violation, did the violation occur because of the setback or because without the building permit, your brother or whoever connected those three homes to create a hotel with connecting, connecting the three homes together so that people who lived in one home could trans go over to the next home? No. No? No. The reason why my brother connected them, that was at the grave of the street, so you could not see them from the street. The reason why he did it was because the wind load uh -huh. and the force of the wind load because they're, they're tall they're, they're thin sure, sure. that they would not they would not hold according to our both our engineers that the houses would okay. tumble now we did not do that for to be a hotel or we just did that for structural reasons he did not me but he did uh -huh. and my father and my brother are the ones who built it is it true that because of all that work, you can now go from one home to the other without going? No. no? Okay. Um, I think maybe we get some clarification from COVID. Yeah, I was just oh, going to give... Let me ask okay. you one, one yeah. quick When you say you keep repeating your brother had issues, can you elaborate? I mean, what kind of issues? Are they financial issues or what, what are you... What are, the, what are issues? Um, all of the above. Okay. Well, what about... All right, I said financial. What else? Well, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I mean what, I did just, um, just uh, emotionally. Uh huh. Okay. Emotionally. All right. That's you know, that's that's been. Uh, I mean, I mean. Just just to provide a little bit of clarification on the timeline, when the houses were originally permitted as three individual uh, single-family homes, they were permitted, built, 
uh, there was a CO issued for each home. After that is when the work was conducted where they connected, for lack of a better word, they connected all three structures together. That is what the code enforcement uh, case was about, was the encroachment into the setback <coughs> and then also the work that they did without uh, obtaining that permit. Okay. The, the issue with the engineer, when the engineer got involved, is my understanding is the engineer's opinion was that if they removed those connections after, now after the fact, that it would jeopardize the structural integrity of the, the, the residences, which is, I think, why the, the Pattersons were a little bit of a not sure how to proceed on correcting a violation without losing the home. Although they were structurally sound individually. At point, as individual homes, originally, they were structurally they sound. They only they, became not so because of work right. they chose to do without getting permits and following rules. Are the, three, are the three homes still connected? Yes. The, yeah, the violations still exist today. And um, just to give you a little bit more information, I don't know if you actually want it or need it, but in January of this year, the potential purchaser of 917, who who's going to, plans on buying it from the bank, their attorney came before the Board of County Commissioners and asked that um, there be an abatement of any fines um, and for a 90-day period, um, which actually is just going to come up, I think, next week. So right now, there, there's no action being taken on 917 uh, because the Board of County Commissioners issued, I guess, an abatement or a stay on any kind of fines if they were to accrue. And th those are the fines that attach it, it to the so property, could, not, right. not to Mr. Was, Patterson. It was so they could try to address the problems at the property or see if it was possible to. I have a question. Sure. Well, yes. You've got me confused here. <laughs> me either. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> What I've heard is that the structures were without permit, mm -hmm. and that doesn't seem to be the case. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that they were structurally in, not sound individually. That's why they had to do the armory. No. How did okay, they so no, no, the, no. The, the homes started out day one when they started construction. They had three permits, uh, individual permits for three individual single-family homes on three separate lots. Those, that, those permits were, were implemented. They built the homes, passed inspections, got a CO. Co End building department was gone of it. End of story. Code enforcement was not involved at any point during that process. Okay. <clears throat> After the CO of the homes was when the work, the additional work was conducted where they connected those homes together. That, those are the structures that, that code enforcement are referring to, not the homes themselves. Where does the setback come into? Is that Charlotte, the armory? Charlotte. That's where they built the structure from, from house one to house two. They're connected okay. together. So the houses were built to the setback lines. The connection then goes, impacts and impedes into the setback okay. line to the, the adjacent home. And it's done on all three are connected. So there's two, there's two sections on, in the middle Skipping of the from homes. house one to two and two to three <laughs> yeah i don't know if there's i've not physically been inside the home so i don't know if there's a physical walkway but there is a connect a structural connection between each home okay. that is what the code enforcement <laughs> case was about and what was found in violation as encroaching into the setbacks and that it was a structure built without <clears throat> building permits jason i think you should explain because i'm not sure sure i understand that these these homes are built on pilings on the beach they are they, they are piling uh, right. supported structures. Right. So the setback actually is into the beach, and the structural integrity comes with these houses that are not sitting on dry land. They're sitting on... Well, they're, they, I mean, there's they're sand underneath them. Yeah. They're not over, they're not yeah. over water, um, but, uh, but the, there's, it's a piling built, and so the, the structure that's built is at the, at the foundation level of the, of the, 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 yeah. the, the lowest horizontal structure of the home if that makes is it a setback sense. violation or a construction violation both, both. there's both. two violations it's a setback violation and a, and a building permit violation oh building which is permit. why why that's uh -huh. a it's accruing five hundred dollars a day because it's two hundred fifty dollars per violation um and that's on each property so hopefully so so that number we came up with is actually times three no 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 well <clears throat> But yes. Only, oh, only, only yes. Each one. property has two hundred and twenty-one thousand three hundred dollars uh, of liens attached to it. He's only here rep uh, regarding 
uh, 917 because that's the only property that he was the owner on at the time it was found in violation. If the setback was, I mean, if the houses were sound before, why, why is taking out the middle, the petitions and make it unsound? That's an engineer question. I couldn't, I couldn't oh, I think tell you. That that's sense. that's what, the, there has been an, engi an, an engineer who's made that determination. I know what I'm saying is that the three were, were valid before they put the thing in the middle. Well, they actually and they extended, violated. they extended. Toward the beach or toward the oh, beach? No, no, the beach. I, I don't believe no, it was towards the beach. I, I think no, it's side by side. It's in, side by side, in between the middle the of the beach home. Wait, well, wait, wait, guys. We got to do it one at a time, okay? It's yeah, the, the connection, the home sit um, on the south side of Scenic Gulf Drive. Uh, so the back of the house faces the Gulf. The front of the house is facing Scenic, uh, Scenic Gulf Drive. The connection is running east and west between those homes, not north and south. So it's the, the mm -hmm. encroachment didn't go any closer to the beach than the actual homes were, is my understanding. I don't believe they, yeah. they I don't think they went further south. They just connected east and west yeah. between How did the setback violation occur? Because there's a side Look, setback. Me? It's a side, a, a side building setback is where the encroachment is on the sides of the property. So you get you you get a okay, look, look, everybody, listen. We're not here to retry the case, okay? It, it, it is what it is. We're faced with the circumstance that this man says he was unaware of his brother's actions at the time they created this violation for him. He owned the property. Now the question is, the, the violation attaches to him personally. The guy's got no money. He's asking us to forgive or reduce the $221,300 that he now incurs. It's, it's not to rehear the case again. It's to right. decide whether or not. What we're trying to do is to understand, understand the case. Yeah. But, we're not but, trying to, re we're just trying to understand but, it. Yeah, but look, what the case was, we did at that time. The lien was then properly attached to it. We don't need to go back and figure out why it was attached and what the case was. We need to figure out if we're going to reduce the fine for this guy. So I have a question. If you okay. Are. Would you please repeat the procedure that is now before the, the county commissioners? But, oh, I'm sorry, that the county commissioners considered in January? No, what the, the potential owner is wanting to do. Oh, you, you, right. said, you said earlier that in, in a few weeks the county commissioners are going to have to take a look at the whole package. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I didn't really state that properly. There, there's no fines accruing right now. That was settled in the foreclosure. I think the potential property owners were concerned or worried that there would be a new code enforcement case brought against them if they brought the pop, uh, if they bought the property. So they, they were just asking the Board of County Commissioners to consider not instituting a new code case and assessing new fines until they could decide whether or not they could fix the problem. And that time period, as my understanding, will be up next week. Okay. So they'll have to come back before the Board of County Commissioners and give them some sort of report. Otherwise, at that point, we could institute a new code case against the new property <clears throat> owners. But that doesn't concern Mark no, Patterson. Right. But what, what, what I think I, I just got clarified between the two of you is that, that his accumulation of fines stopped at the time when of the, the foreclosure, foreclosure sale took yes, place. Yes, sir. All right. So what does he owe totally? $221,300. Two? No, two hundred and twenty-one thousand three hundred dollars. End of sentence. Okay. So now our our task is to decide whether we need to saddle this guy with a two hundred twenty-one thousand dollar debt for the rest of his life for the actions that he claims he was not aware of at the time that they. I, I wouldn't. I don't know that it's fair to us for you to say, "Are we going to saddle him with something?" I mean, that's. It's not like we're going. Oh, okay. Well, excuse my choice of words then. Should the fine uh, remain attached to this man? Okay. Can I ask a question about the father and the brother and the other two properties? What What happened to the liens against the other two properties? It's my understanding. Um, so uh, the other two properties we have. 925 Scenic Gulf Drive, that has a foreclosure case that's still pending. And so the county was also brought into that, but it's not been finalized. And is our, our, our fines still accumulated? Yes, on that one. And then uh, 915 Scenic Gulf Drive, I did some research this afternoon. I couldn't find any information that that property has been foreclosed <clears throat> on yet or is in the process of being foreclosed. And, and do we know who owns those two properties? I believe it's Mark Patterson's father, Howard Patterson. He owns both of the other buildings? Yes, the one, 
the, um, the, the other house is in foreclosure. And, but we, but my father and my mother own the other house. Right. Okay. And, um, and, uh, that's probably the, the one that they, that, that may be, that they might be able to keep, but we're unsure right now yeah. because. Not, so 915, so 915, um, uh, no yeah. foreclosure on that one, but 925, it's in the process of being So we may very well, I mean, it's good potential that we would see your father back in the same thing. This is, like that. yes, sir. This is between Howard and Chad, my brother was a general contractor, licensed contractor, mm -hmm. and my father was, you know, they, they, they were the ones that they were the, um, the builders, right? And, and um, I, you know, I just, I stepped in to help my brother. Well, I understand. And I didn't I know that. All I'm like the other guys is whatever we do here, it'd be precedent for when your father comes back. It, you know, it's like the, the people that, that are fixing <coughs> up the middle house that they bought. Um, the middle house from the bank. They're in there remodeling something that they know that there's a fine on. That there will be, or maybe, may or may not be a fine on. They they bought into a house that they knew that there were problems in. I bought into a to a house that I did not know that there was a problem. So I think there's, you know. Can I ask where you were when all this was occurring? I was um, in Atlanta, Georgia. That's where we're from. And so, you know, I just came, came down and I was under, you know, I didn't, okay. didn't really you, understand. You, you, you were not involved in the reconstruction. I was not involved and I wish I was not involved. <laughs> <laughs> How, how much did you, or is this appropriate to ask, how much you did you pony up to help uh, to, to, your brother out? I mean, I guess <coughs> you did this in the, the manner you did this was in purchasing the house from him, right? It was, I, I helped my brother out financially. Through, for, through purchasing the house or in some? Through, 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 uh, this kind of helping him out because I knew that he had problems and issues. And, um, and then he, and then he filed, you know, filed for, um, for bankruptcy. But I just kind of helped him out and he gave me the house over. And, um, you know. So and, assumed the mortgage, I guess. You know, mm -hmm. I assumed the, the, you know. And um, I did not, I'm not on the mortgage. I mean, I guess, I guess that would, I'm not, I'm not liable for no. the mortgage. I was not liable for the mortgage. The note. The note. Mm -hmm. But I was just, he still was the one that got it. And so I just came down to help him to go through this, through the process of, of him, you know, but yeah. it did turn out the, you Do you know, remember so. the day? Mm -hmm. But you did own the property at one time? Yes, yeah. I did take a stamp for that. Okay. And because I, you know, I <clears throat> Okay, if no one has any further questions, I'd just suggest that we need to talk among our, ourselves and figure out what we ought to do about this. And so does anyone does, have any does, more? Does, does staff have any more input? It's my understanding the staff has no recommendation one way or another. This is completely up to you guys. It's within your discretion. <laughs> okay, thank you then. Oh, Don't go you. away. We'll <laughs> talk about it here and figure out what we're going to do. Uh, does anyone want to make a uh, opening remark here? <coughs> oh, I'll, I'll start off. Yeah, he's been throwing his, essentially throwing himself upon the mercy of the court here, which I mean, I'm, I'm inclined to, to show mercy, but I guess I am not really comfortable with one, as I mentioned before, for setting kind of precedent here for a similar action to come. And two, I guess I'm not totally comfortable with, I mean, I know the come up here, it has all of the, the financials of the foreclosures and the bankruptcies and all that. Are they <coughs> documented? I mean, are they all in this and everything they're telling us is exactly the way it went down? Yes, sir. Okay. And, um, as far so, as 917 is concerned, from so, what I can tell. Okay. So Mark here, I guess, is basically has been documented. It does not have any assets to... <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, well, that I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean... We that's just have to rely on this. Did you go through bankruptcy? Uh, that, that was my brother, Chad okay. Patterson. Okay. Right. Can right. I ask another question? Or are you finished? Yeah. Did you own this house during any of the construction period that took place? Uh, no, not during the construction period. So the, 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 the construction, the remodeling, and, and the violations that already occurred when you bought the house? Uh, all that occurred before I bought the house, before all this before all these subjects, all these issues came up. So the construction was finished, but the 
violation was had not occurred? I, believe that I don't believe Cone Force had a case. Pardon me? I don't believe we had a case on the property at the time that he bought, that he bought it. So okay. I don't know, not to say that it hadn't occurred, but there was no active code cases. We were not aware of it. Okay. You said you bought the house in 2009? Um, September. Yeah. Okay. In yes. September. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and when was the code violation? The February of 2010. The, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The hearing occurred yeah. in February of 2010. <clears throat> the hearing? No, the notice of violation was February right. of 2010. The notice of violation, okay. February 23rd of 2010. So, so as he said, there was no, he, did, he was not aware of any violation until February of 2010. Right. And, then, and then the only officers I had at that time that was recommended from the engineer, um, the only officers that my brother was, was recommended, or, you know, there was no solution at that point in time that I could, that I could <coughs> do besides tear down the house with a mortgage and a bank. No, there was no issues. At, at what time was that? At, I'm just saying, like tomorrow, yesterday, or, the, or not yesterday, but um, when I owned it, there was no solution that I could do to redeem, um, to redeem apology to a the After the violation. Because, you know, had a mortgage, we couldn't tear down the house, or I couldn't tear down the house. You know, there was nothing that I could do to satisfy, you know, the yeah. bank wouldn't <clears throat> hear it. Nobody would hear uh, my side of the the um, situation, and so there was just there was just nothing that I could do. I, you know, I exhausted efforts and to um, to, but you know, there was I, I, I couldn't afford to tear down the house <coughs> or to do. You know, I you know. I mean, Let me ask you one more question. Uh, are you in a position to put anything down against this lien? Are you in, are, do you intend to pay any of this lien? Well, um, Jane, um, Jane. Uh, under a um, under the um, the statute under the statute there there is a provision in um, section 162.092c that says if the board determines that the violation is I believe non I can pull up the actual statute um, if the code enforcement board finds the violation to be irreparable or irreversible in nature the fine is limited to five thousand. That's under uh, 2A. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and say, as uh, representing you guys, I wouldn't be comfortable with you guys considering that because the original uh, order did not make that finding. So I think it would be inappropriate for you guys now to come back and make that finding. What, the 5000 fine? Well, no. yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. Have you paid so, anything at all on this lien? Well, I was hoping I could make payments for the $5,000. Have have you paid anything at all to this point toward the lien? There, there was no there's no action towards that. There was yeah, no man. actions towards no payment that. set up. And I, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean <clears throat> just just to be clear, you guys can reduce this lien to zero if you want to or to a lesser amount. So but your previous statement was say don't rely on that statute. Do not we, rely on section two. We did not incorporate a. it at all into exactly. the final amount. Right. I would, if I, what we would do is the final order would rely on uh, 2C rather than 2A. What's 2C? I'm sorry, if you have your statute, <coughs> it's subparagraph. Uh, it's in front of you, Gordon. See, yeah, I, can, I know it, but okay. This is being brought before you under okay, for, uh, paragraph 2C. Okay, so any, anything we do is, is going to be acceptable to the... Right. You, you could reduce it to $5,000 as a practical matter, but I wouldn't want us to rely on paragraph 2A. Right because that requires a finding that wasn't made at the time of the initial hearing. Okay, so let's go back to trying sense. to find a resolution here, okay? <laughs> so you'd be happy with 5,000? <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, I've been there. <laughs> the collection procedures here, I mean, does we can do like it. Poor this, he, he, does he have a judgment hanging over his head? He just has a judgment against so him. So if he can't pay it, he's just, and he doesn't come in the end, and he's got that judgment hanging over his head just till he either pays it off or right. whatever. Okay. And, and how long has it been hanging over his head now? Since uh, 2013, is that what we said? No, I'm sorry, 2012. 2012, okay. And nothing's <clears throat> been paid on it so far. 
Okay. Anybody got a suggestion? I'd be for doing away with all of it. I mean, it's stuff hanging over him like that. I wouldn't want that on me. And I don't think it was his fault, really. I mean, he's got some, naturally, he's got some culpability in it, but uh, looks like he's in a mess. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would you suggest? I suggest we do away with it. Do away with it totally. Yes, sir. Or reduce the amount to zero. I would, but I mean, that's, a, that's just my suggestion. Uh, I think the fines are too stiff in the first place. Really. Okay. Before we continue on that, has, has the father attempted to pay anything against this lien? It's my understanding that he has not. Well, he but doesn't the, owe anything. The dad doesn't owe anything on anything. this case. Oh, yeah, I know, but I mean, he was helping his brother <coughs> and his father out, and they stuck him with uh, $200,000. No, his, fa his father also owned the property at the time, 917. Well, well, let me speak on that, please. Okay. Um, that they still, that fine is not being removed from the other properties. It's just me. And so the, the fine still I understand. levies against my father. I understand. And, you know, so but can I ask you what your father's position on this is with you regarding the money that you owe? Is his his opinion that's all you owe it and it's got nothing to do with your brother or your father well my brother my father my, you know you know, I understand my father's situation that he filed bankruptcy and my father's situation is 75 and what's that the, 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 well no I'm just saying that <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying that there's, there's you're, you're getting in my face now. yeah you gotta be careful <laughs> <laughs> mine too <laughs> it's, just, it's very it's very um, you know that we understand that we're probably gonna lose lose it all we understand it, and we, we understand it. Man, House 3 is in, in foreclosure right now, as we speak, and we understand it, and we understand that that, that, we're, that we're not going to, you know, we came from Atlanta, you know, that was <coughs> retirement money, everything, that they had their savings mm -hmm. home, and we're probably going to lose all of it, but, you know, but it was still, but that's them, not me. If we do something to help you, are we going to have two more people coming up here, Probably. your neighbors, um, wanting the same thing? Probably. I the would think so. The neighbors who bought it, they bought in knowing they paid $200,000 for that home. 917, they paid $200,000 for that beach home. They bought that home for $200,000 knowing that there was yeah. problems with that house. They bought in knowing that there was problems. That's really why they bought it for $200,000, and they're remodeling it now. And so, they got a permit. <laughs> no, they're doing interior, so they have to have permit for interior work. But, um, but I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them, and I hope them will. You know. I don't know what's fair. I mean, that's. But this is not. This is not. Been here longer the, than the, I have. the fine still stays on the property <clears throat> for my parents and my brother. But I'm just saying that I did not know intentions that um, that I was buying into this. This is these. these um, it, it's, I, I have a, uh, go ahead. Wait, Richard, it's my yeah. understanding yeah. that his father stands to fall into the same situation where he's going to owe these fines that have accrued. And I got to say, if I was his, him and I saw my son go and, and ask for relief, and you know, I'd it's certainly a different set of circumstances. I understand that. I'm not saying that it would happen. I'm just, you know, his question was, "Will your father be coming?" And I'm yeah, yeah I'm but saying, look. This is the, what happens to us all the time. This is the case we're hearing. We're right, not hearing about the neighbor. We're not hearing about the dad. We're not hearing about the guy that bought the house. We're talking about this guy. I was guy. responding to his okay? question. So we need to decide whether he's <clears throat> sincere in his comments that he didn't know what was coming down and he bought into a can of worms for which he's now on the hook $221,300. Or... Did we clarify, can I ask... After you bought the home in when, 2009? Is that when you bought it? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Was there any construction going on in those three homes, including your home? Robert, you Robert, had... Robert, listen to what I but said. It's a violation of the code in his... In he's, his... he's answered that several he's times. He's answered well, the question okay. several I, times. So I missed it. I'm, I'm over 76. <laughs> could, could you ask him to repeat That's that? a good excuse. <laughs> Okay, and your question is? The question is, <clears throat> after you became the owner of the house, was the, did, they, did they continue construction in your home in violation of the code while you were the owner? Um, during, during that time, during that time frame, I bought into that home not knowing what was going right, so on. So the answer is yes. That, yes, okay. yes, yes. That's yes, all. Sir, I, the, the being a, you know. Thank you. 
And um, that, my, but the point is, my father coming in here and being the next one in here, house three is being foreclosed on. And so it's pretty likely that the house, the house one is going to be foreclosed on too. Question. And that's going to be the next situation. So there are going to be new owners <coughs> probably for those homes. And so, you know, then that's not, you know, but that's just the unfortunate thing that happens in life. Where, where, where were you when this was all going on? Were you in Atlanta? I, I was in Atlanta. That's where I'm from. And, um, you know, and, and, um, and, and um, so I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm down here, and, um, you know, I'm just working. And so. Okay, Gordon, Gord, why, why didn't the finance company uh, inherit those fines that you got? Was it personal fines or was it fines against the building? Yeah, usually, if, usually, if they foreclose, a government lien is usually upheld. Sydney, you could answer that question. What, what was it? I'm sorry. Yeah, why did the lien. fine? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Why did the lien attach to him personally, it's not just to the, the property? Because that's what our statute says. Under the code enforcement statute, a lien is against the property and against the person who's the violator. I know what I'm saying is, when when the when they foreclosed on it, didn't they inherit? Didn't the mortgage the mortgage company inherit the fines? No. Whenever the foreclosure happens, it extinguishes all liens on the property. But government liens Ours, usually are except not a code enforcement lien. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, I got so, so look, we've got Dave saying that uh, he should reduce. What am I saying? Well, you tell me what you're saying. Okay. Don't let me put words in your mouth. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just. I'm, I don't know. Gordon, Gordon did you? No, you, you that make, that no, no, that wasn't a motion. I, I want to see what everybody thinks. But if you think five thousand, that's fine. Or I'll vote for either one. I'll make a motion so we can get yeah. it going. Well, no, let's just talk about it, and then we'll make the motion. Okay? What talk do you about think? About what? The fine or the appropriate action that we ought to take? I mean, I'd be inclined to not necessarily agree, but acquiesce and go with what board says. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's just. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm disinclined to wipe everything out. I you know we. That's that's just how I feel. Well, and and why is that? Because you don't believe that he's. Uh, there's a lot. I, I don't. There are a lot of things that just don't feel right to me. There, I have issues when you know we go through this whole process, we make a decision, and then for this reason or that reason, um, they come back in and, and and go. Well, you know, gosh, you know, can I be excused from this? Or I didn't know. Or um, you know, there's a variety of reasons. I mean, I, you know. I, you know, to be really upfront about it, I don't feel like a good case has been presented to me that that's laid it out well, that's convinced me um, that, that that he's necessarily deserving of having this whole thing wiped out. I mean, I found some of the answers a little bit unclear and vague. Just the question he just asked. I mean, instead of answering yes, he started <laughs> down this road of. Well, and, and you know, well, okay, okay. Kind of, so it's that kind of thing that puts me in this place that I'm not comfortable with everything that I'm hearing, and, and that I want to just wipe it all out. Okay, Robert. Well, to agree with what he said, you know, this this board's been doing its job, but if you ask, there's about well over a million dollars of outstanding fines that have not been paid by people who have come before in this board and told to pay the fine, and they just walk away and never do. And the county has not chased that money. Well, I you, will make you, a motion at this time, though, Mr. Chairman. I'll move that he be ordered to pay 10% of the outstanding fine. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Then we're going to discuss it. Can I ask a moment? Yes. Sure. A moment ago, when you were explaining the statute, how the statute said that, that the, the fine goes toward the property and the violator. The property owner. Just yeah. the property owner. Okay, property right. owner. So the fact that he <coughs> actually committed the violation. Right. It, it's the property owner. Right. That's the and fact. that's based on the time of the notice? Is that where it's told? No, order? the time the time of our final order. Final whoever order. owns the right. property okay. at that time. All right. That's the answer. All right. Well, let me say that, first of all, <clears throat> the object of being on this board is to hear the very things that you say you don't want to hear. Well, that's why we're here. That's not why. Who said they that's didn't want why, to hear something? Well, you just 
said, didn't you? No. That you're tired of hearing people come back to the board. No, I didn't say ask. I was tired of hearing. I'm, I said that it's something that happens a lot. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm here to for whatever, and I don't have a problem listening to it again and again. I'm not saying I'm tired of it. I'm, okay. I'm, well, you know, and again, our, our role here is to get compliance. We're not an income-producing part of the county revenue stream. We're not policemen with a speed trap. We're here to try to get people to do what they need to do. So I don't see that how many fines are outstanding against people for other cases has anything at all to do with the case that's in front of us. I agree. Okay? So now we've got a motion to uh, make the fine 10% of the $221,300. In other words, $22,130. And we have a second. And uh, we have discussed it, and I'm going to take a vote on that question. Well, we Charlotte. haven't given a chance to discuss. I would like to find out. Did they ever pay for the adjudication of the cost of having the hearing that night? No, ma'am. Okay, I would like that tacked on in full. Which I believe at the time that, was three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. I mean, this is kind of where it kind of goes back to me again. I, I don't feel like there's been any thing on their part that has shown a desire to comply, do what they've been asked to, just pay for the hearing of the. You know, there's just there's not been anything that's. Um, made me feel warm and fuzzy about how this has gone down. Okay, Mark, do you want to say something? Yes, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Richard and Tom. Thank you. Um, there was nothing that I can do. I cannot tear out the sidewalks or the side, the side things, the, the placements. I cannot do that. The, the works company would not allow that. I cannot tear down the homes. I cannot do... I came here... I don't have $22,000. I don't have I don't have enough money to tear down the house. I don't have enough money to go out there and and um, I don't have enough money to even if the banks would allow that and y'all would allow that y'all wouldn't allow us to tear it out. We asked for that to tear up the um, the easements, but y'all would not allow that. I got caught into a situation that I had no idea that I was getting caught up into. You know, and I don't have the money to do this. And I don't have the money to pay. $20,000 no, in fines that I didn't create, that I had nothing to do with. Tom made a point that there probably are people who, who can leave the county or the state and not pay you all. But I do live in Walton County, and I consider this home. And, and um, but there's no way that I can pay you on $22,000. I mean, I was, you know, you know the, the $5,000, I was hoping I could make payments on. You know, I don't have $22,000. I didn't have the money to tear out my house, even though the bank wouldn't allow it. The easements, I don't have the money to tear out easements that y'all would not allow us to do. Okay. Do. Okay. Okay. There's I just see. nothing that I can do. Okay. It's Look. Irreplaceable. Then okay. Nothing okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks okay. Time, I'm going to call the question. There's a motion on the floor, and it is to fine him $22,130. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Raise your hands. All those opposed? All right, the motion fails. I'll entertain a new motion. I'm going to make a motion with uh, fining 5000 And I'm sorry, just to be clear, we're going to reduce the fine amount to 5000 right. yes. Can you pay that? Yes, sir. Can I? Yes, sir. And you would like to add the $300? I would like to add the $300 for yeah. the court case. Can you pay 5300 Thank y'all so much. Well, wait, wait, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. Don't get too carried away. Uh, how quickly could you pay back the $5,300? Um, I can, um. In a year? Uh, no, 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 I can do it sooner. I can do it whenever, whenever y'all would want me to do it. Um, I, I, I can go to my uncle, and my uncle could loan me the money. He's a doctor, and um, he's my favorite, my favorite uncle, and he can do it. Okay, so now we've got a motion. Do we have a motion? I'm in a motion. Five thousand three hundred. Okay. Reduce and a second. Wait, wait, wait. Let <coughs> oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, he says um, that. Tack on what he said. If we do this, if we reduce it, there's no time on it. We're, we're just going to reduce it. Okay. Just going to reduce yes. it, and then it's up to him to come through. Yes. In a, oh, we can have time. Could we do it that? Hey, you got. We'll reduce <coughs> it, but the fine needs to be paid by such and such a day, or the reduction doesn't uh, hold. Um, no, I'm afraid Can't do that, that. No, no, sir. So we're just going to rely on his good faith. Yes. Very interesting. No, no, no. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Okay. All right. So I've got the motion. 
And do I have a second? Yes, you do. All right. To reduce the fine to $5,300 with the understanding that Mr. Mark Patterson is going to pay this fine. And if there's no further question, further discussion, I'm going to call this question. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Sorry. So the fine has been reduced to $5,300. And to show good faith to this organization and to the county, it would certainly benefit you to pay that money as soon as possible. And uh, Mr. Patterson, yeah. would your attorney like to prepare the order? No, okay. And I'll, I'll give you my contact information. You can okay. get it to me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to talk about? Can I have a point of order, please? Yes. Um, how many of us are supposed to be voting members of the board? Are what? Voting members of this I board. I think everyone on this board is voting member. There's no uh, I think we have five tonight. plus two alternates. Is that correct? Yes. Five and two alternates. And uh, uh, Alan's one of the alternates. And who's the other one? Gordon. Gordon's an alternate. I'm an alternate. <clears throat> okay, there are six of us voting tonight. Right. But in, even so, it would have carried if Gordon's vote wasn't counted. I'm just making the point of order, Mr. Chairman. So I don't get to vote on these things? Is that right? right? As an alternate, I don't get to vote. That's correct. Well, I've I'm never quite understood that. Do you <laughs> Why know? I need to show up? <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to think on it's that one. Okay, would you let us know at the next right? meeting? Because that's, yeah, that's, that's always been unclear. <clears throat> there are five of us here. It's my under and I will look into this for all of us so we will have clarification, but I, I think the idea of the alternate is because we have to have so many people who are, we have to have a contractor, we have to have yeah, yeah. real estate, right. all no. that, and the alternates are just... Not only that, but sometimes every now and then somebody's conscience bothers them and they have to recuse themselves. Correct. And we won't know it until it's here. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. But I, I will get us a clear answer so, uh, for the next my meeting. Vote didn't count, right? Well, 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 I wouldn't well, say that. I always had it before. Well, I can't even make the motion. Could I make the motion? Well, I'm, it, it, that may be an issue, it's, too. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, then, I'm no. move, then if that's the case, I, I inherit his motion. And why don't you second it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That way, there's no question that we did something funny. Yes. Well, take a vote, though. And I, I would okay. like to have so the then let's, let's re vote it, okay? I move. Now the motion has been made. Please. Okay, I move that we reduce, reduce the this fine from the $221,300 to $5,000 plus a $300 unpaid fee for the hearing that you had last time where this was incurred. So that's a total of five thousand three hundred dollars that is now subject to the property of his personal lien, or to his personal lien now. His personal lien, and you'll second that. I second. Okay, all those in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. I'm okay, still in the favor motion of carries. <laughs> I'm still in favor. <laughs> Sorry, of it. Okay. okay. Uh, Hearing no further business, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. Uh, before you adjourn, uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I would, I'd like to get some, I'd like to discuss a situation, and I think we have to discuss this while we're still in session because we can't talk about things <coughs> when we're not in session. Is that correct? You, and the you, Sunshine Law well, for the about. four well, or the yeah, five What do we have to talk, talk about? You, you cannot discuss um, any matters that will become or come before this board. Right. All right, so we can't... But I can discuss things that are affecting the Code Enforcement Board that have nothing to do with the case before the board. If you're or suggesting what? the magistrate, I was, exactly told, I was told we can't discuss that as a board. That's something yeah. that we as citizens can talk about, but it's not an official but matter it's, for all right, this so board. So it, it is not a board issue. So we can right. adjourn and talk about it? Yeah. That's, that's you can talk amongst yourselves. It's like... So, Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn and stay and talk about it. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Can we do that? Do we need to walk out there? That's fine. I, I would encourage all of you to limit your discussions outside of an open meeting because you could get into right. tricky territory. So well, I, that's I, right. I, that's, I why, would, that's why I think we should do it while we're having the meeting. But we, but we were we're told not We're to. allowed to talk to each other in a meeting. Yeah, but you understand, our role is that of judge, okay? Our role is not to determine whether or not the board has the right to exist that, in its present the point, form the point or I'm some other form. What I'm getting at is that we could not discuss the issue if we're not in session. 
even though it has nothing to do with the case. You and I can talk about it all we you, like. You can discuss the issue. I just yeah. I caution all of you to be extremely careful with any kind of conversations you have about each other. I, I would caution all of you to be careful about private conversations <coughs> you have with each other just because of the impression that there might be some impropriety. That's all. Well, how will they be, discuss, be able to discuss it? You won't. You bend up no, no, no. Listen, uh, I asked this question, and Mark Davis said to me, he said, I'll let you know when the county commission is going to hear it. It went through planning. Did you read right. that one? Yes. And the planning commission voted to retain the board, not the... That's correct. And, and if you would all like, I, I will send you each an email telling you the day that it will be before the board of county commission. Right. There's a meeting at Defuniac, and then there's one down here. Yes. <clears throat> Please. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So you don't think it's, po it's, it's proper for us to discuss the political issues here? No. Mr. Sullivan, you can, you can discuss issues that aren't related to a matter that comes before the board, but again, I just caution you with any kind of discussions you have with each other outside of the meeting. That's all. Does anybody want to talk about what happened? And why it happened? And what might happen? No, I don't. I think we know. No, certainly not here. OK. We're not after what Cindy just uh, advised us. Well, I just went through an hour with Clay Atkinson, who said, I can talk to anybody except other members of the board, unless other members of the board are in a meeting, and two of us together in a room constitute a meeting. So the question is, the only time I think that we can legally discuss situations with one another is while we're in session. Yeah, but listen, the board's attorney, the Mark chairman, Davis, chairman told me that I can't discuss it here. And with I got to listen to my attorney. With whom? With any of us, as a board, we cannot talk about whether or not we deserve to be a board of citizens or a special magistrate. That's not something to be talked about while we're in session. Yeah. Okay. That's what our attorney yeah. advised us. I'm not going to go against his advice. Okay, so. I, I won't ask I make motion that we adjourn the meeting. My opinion, Robert, is if there's discussion to be had, we need to bring I it. I need a second. I need a second. occurs and let the county commission go. Okay. We can talk all we want in front of them. Okay, I've got a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? This meeting is adjourned. Who seconded? Yeah. Did we vote? I didn't hear a second. We didn't say or a vote. You don't have to. You don't? Okay. No. The motion and a second will end it. I'm learning. You made the motion, second, and vote. Yeah. Okay.